Hello everyone, this is Rue back with a third chapter in Bloodborne Sketch and Speculate. I want to talk about Kanehurst and Hemwick Lane in this episode, specifically their relationship to one another. Kanehurst is a very different area compared to the rest of Bloodborne, and I feel like the area was more of a nod to Dark Souls than anything else. One of my favorite weapons, the Rider Palash, comes from here and it is the inspiration behind today's drawing. When I first found the weapon, I was curious as to what it meant, so I looked it up and found it translates to Horseback Rider Sword. I immediately thought that I would come across enemies or a boss on horseback and was kind of disappointed when I didn't. I even went as far to assume that the rider would be headless, as some of the enemies in Kanehurst are holding their severed head, you find the headpiece for the knight's armor separate from the rest of the set, and the location prior to Kanehurst, Hemwick Charnel Lane, was clearly inspired by the legend of Sleepy Hollow and other American Gothic horror stories. Kanehurst Castle, on the other hand, is more likely inspired by Count Dracula's castle from Bram Stoker's story. The evidence for this is in the architecture, the cold environment, and enemies found here. Blood-sucking beasts, bat-like gargoyles, and at the top of it all, the immortal queen Annalise, who asks you to hunt down blood drags for her. There's some interesting lore found in this item. Blood Drag reads, The vile bloods of Kanehurst, bloodlusting hunters, see these frightful things in cold blood. They often appear in the blood echoes of fiends, that is to say, the blood of hunters. Queen Annalise partakes in these blood dregs offerings, so that she may one day bear the child of blood, the next vile blood heir. I originally had the idea that perhaps there was a vile blood heir, who was killed by Martyr Logarius and his executioners when he led the assault on Kanehurst Castle, and now Annalise was seeking out blood dregs again for a new vile blood heir. Then I had another thought, what if the vile blood heir was still out there? Before the executioners came, I pictured the nobles of Kanehurst riding out at night hunting down both beast and hunter alike in search of these blood dregs. Hemwick would be the most likely target for these raids, since it is the only direct route to Kanehurst in the game but I imagine there were probably some other smaller villages around the coastline that could be targets for Vile Blood raids that would be led by the Vile Blood heir. My idea was that the executioners stormed Kanehurst while the Vile Bloods are out raiding, which is why we only find widows and servants in the castle when we arrive. Seeing their castle lost from across the lake, the Vile Bloods have now taken hold in a nearby town and claimed for their own. Another possibility is that some of the Vile Bloods escaped the attack on the castle. I don't know if other Vilebloods are somewhat immortal like their queen, or if they could only truly be killed in some special way, just like vampires. This could explain why the widows still haunt Kanehurst, and why some of the widows are holding their own head. The executioners tried to kill them, but failed to finish them off completely. I like the idea of coming across a town that has been defending against Vileblood raiders for years, but has finally fallen. You approach the walled settlement through an open field leading up to the main gate. Halfway there, the gates open and a horseman comes riding out to meet you. It is a headless knight from Kanehurst, who the executioners failed to kill, and there would be a boss fight with him in the open field in front of the town. It would be a really cool way to introduce a new area. Once defeated, you would have to explore the town and try to hunt down the remaining Kanehurst nobles, ending with the vile blood heir as the last boss. I think this could be a really interesting area to explore. It could give us some more info on Kanehurst and the Vilebloods, while also expanding the surrounding area. The headstone in the Hunter's Dream that leads to Hemwick and the Forbidden Woods areas also has the most space on it for more locations, so it seems pretty likely that those areas will be added to. I also think it's kind of odd that there are no enemies or bosses in Bloodborne on horseback, as that would be one of the fastest ways for someone who can't move through the Hunter's Dream to travel. There are also a ton of dead horses to be found in Yarnum, so why not find a few living ones? Also, those horsemen are cool, and should be in Bloodborne. I've also had a ton of really cool requests for different ideas for videos or areas that you'd like to see expanded on, so if you have any, please feel free to share, and maybe I'll do a video around your ideas too. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see more, please leave a like and subscribe. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below.